in defining standing high-level languages and methods to conduct system modeling and multi-concern analysis. His work includes the development of techniques like modeling by reverse engineering, language transformation towards formal frameworks in order to validate system properties. He has participated in several projects uh, like Evita, Sesan Grids, Mosaris, Amas, and so forth and so on. And more recently, and now we are talking about that, PDP4E. Thank you very much, so the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so while uh, Massimo switches the presentation, so I would like to ask uh, how many of you would uh, consider themselves uh, to be uh, engineers or uh, engineering professionals? Please raise your hands. Stretch, stretch your arms because it's a bit late, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there it is. So uh, I'm going to uh, present together with uh, my colleague Gabriel uh, some of uh, the results of uh, the pdp 4 project, uh, which is privacy and data protection for engineers. That's the original of, uh, of my question. Uh, it's a project that has been already mentioned uh, before in several presentations. We have here Antonio, uh, Jose, also David is uh, there behind. So there's uh, quite a few of us uh, besides uh, both of us. And there are eight partners that uh, you can see there. That's a project funded by the European Commission and its 2020 project. And uh, as I said, it's trying to provide tools uh, that are addressing engineers in their development process. Why? Because uh, if I ask uh, whether GDPR should be an engineer's job, sometimes it's understood as something which is just a matter of lawyers, well, it seems that the answer is yes. Sorry for the spoiler, but it's an engineer's job. So these are captures uh, from different uh, magazines, journals, blog posts uh, that uh, have in common that they answer yes, that question. So uh, what you need to know about Europe's data privacy rules, uh, they will even affect individual coders, uh, what developers need to know, how they will change the way you develop, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, unfortunately, this is uh, another point. So how many of you would consider uh, themselves to be privacy experts, privacy professionals? <laughs> okay, most of you. Unfortunately, the world outside is not the same as this room. So engineers are not so, so often privacy professionals. And what engineers find, uh, what they encounter when they are uh, creating new products, uh, when they are addressing new endeavors, is uh, first the law, the GDPR, the thick, big book of the law, GDPR, uh, plus Working Party 29 guidance and so on. Uh, which is great, but it's not uh, addressing engineers. They also find the principles of privacy by design and data protection by design. Uh, they're from Anka Bukian, this uh, figure, which are also great, but they are just quite abstract. They are not operational. They cannot put them into specific terms of the developments. Then there are privacy enhancing technologies, which are also great, but uh, which are for privacy experts in this case. It's difficult to systematically apply them. And we also have a bunch of tools, but uh, they are addressing mostly managers, uh, lawyers also, they are not addressing engineers. So privacy program management, privacy enterprise management tools. What's what engineers want? They want some of the things that uh, are on the right hand side. They want backlog items for requirements. Uh, they want uh, data flow diagrams. They want class diagrams. They want database models. They want assurance cases. They want uh, risk management. That's what engineers are used to working with. And that's what we aim at providing from pdp 4 e So uh, we consider that engineers are not privacy experts, but they will need to face privacy issues because they are the ones who are developing the systems. And we cannot mm, put engineers aside. We need to put them in the center of privacy engineering. They will also for sure get privacy advice, but they will face problems that we need to solve by themselves. And uh, we consider that we shall endow them with uh, privacy and data protection tools which are aligned to their mindset. So if there's a bunch of tools, a bunch of methods addressing software and systems engineering, why don't we introduce existing privacy and data protection wisdom such as the one that has been exposed in the several IPEN workshops into the existing software and system engineering disciplines and we provide 
engineers with tools that are aligned to their mindset. That's what we are doing in PDP4E. We are introducing privacy and data protection features into general purpose engineering tools. We are introducing privacy and data protection activities into general purpose engineering methods. We are providing a body of knowledge that uh, systematizes the privacy engineering knowledge. And we aim to foster the creation of a privacy engineering community where privacy experts and engineers are gathered together and with bridges that gap that I have mentioned. How do we do that? Uh, we are addressing mostly four disciplines which are quite related to privacy engineering, to, to privacy and to software and systems engineering. Requirements engineering, model-driven design, assurance and certification, and risk management. So if we have legal requirements, they are engineering requirements, so that's why requirements engineering is here. We also consider that uh, the um, engineers need to know their own systems they are creating, which is something they do when they are designing their systems, but we are annotating those designs with privacy properties, which also allows us to analyze those designs against compliance and to transform them so that they become compliant. Then there's risk management, which is traversal to uh, privacy data protection and GDPR and assurance and certification because it's not uh, good enough uh, to be good, but you also need to demonstrate that. So behave good and look good. Uh, we are applying that to two scenarios, one on smart grid and the other one on connected vehicles. And as I said, that uh, we are departing from the state of the art on privacy engineering and from existing tools. This is the proof. All these are the methods and the tools that we are reusing as background and which we are extending. So you can find there uh, privacy uh, risk management methods such as Lindun, uh, for requirements UML for PF, Propam, Priper, uh, Musa as a risk management tool, OpenCert, a general purpose as soon as tool. This is not privacy tool, as I said. Papyrus, a general purpose modeling tool, Framacy, which is a, a code instrumentation tool. So there are lots of tools that we are extending in, in this project. Uh, from a different perspective, these tools are related to one another. It's not just that we are providing a bunch of tools, a tool set, uh, which are so isolated. There are interactions between the different methods and between the different tools. I would not like to go into the details, so just this figure to uh, summarize that there are interactions and that the results from one tool go to the other. And uh, going now into some of uh, those tools uh, and methods that we're providing for those disciplines, I will introduce you two of them, then uh, I will give the floor to, to Gabriel. So first, risk-oriented methods. You may know that GDPR is uh, quite risk-oriented. It's, uh, first of all, you need to be able to, in order to comply, uh, you need first to have uh, addressed the potential risks for the data subject. It's not enough if there's no breach, uh, if you have not properly addressed the risks beforehand. That's why it's said that GDPR is risk-oriented. There are also a lot of uh, articles in GDPR that deal with risks. For instance, data protection impact assessment, uh, 35. There's also security impact analysis, security measures to address security risks compensations, liabilities, and fines, which uh, are also risks in this case for, for the company. Also related to supply chain and vendor relationship manager, management, so the risks of your processors, of joint controllers, risks to rights and freedoms of data subjects, risks derived from data breaches, derived business risk, et cetera, et cetera. But not everything in GDPR is a risk. There's a, a tendency to try to make everything in privacy and data protection look like a risk. A couple of examples there. Risk of not asking the data subjects their age, or risk of not providing a transparent policy. For us, those are not risks. Those uh, are requirements, those are goals that you must comply with, but you cannot say, okay, I have a risk of not providing a transparent policy. Come on, put a transparent policy. Write it correctly. There can be a risk of misidentifying a child after an adult. Yes, there's a degree of uncertainty there if uh, the child is posing as an adult or if the authentication mechanisms are not strong enough, yeah, there's a risk there. Risk of users having low reading skills and not understanding a given privacy policy. Maybe they, uh, their mother language is not uh, the language or their mother tongue is not the language in which the policy is written. Those risks exist. But 
those risks have an uncertainty. And that's why we consider that we should have two separate uh, ways of addressing uh, GDPR requirements, one from risk orientation, another one from goal orientation. This risk orientation is reflected in this tool. These are captures from the Musa risk management tool. In this case, it's only addressing security risks, not yet privacy risks. But this allows engineers to manage risks using a, a Kanban board, which uh, is a, a visualization to which engineers are used and uh, also some sliders uh, to put the different uh, levels of impact and likelihood of the risks and the threats they are analyzing. Then this is a capture from a different tool. Uh, this is from OpenCert. And uh, this is the current version we have for modeling for assurance of uh, articles uh, 3536, so DPIAs, and to the right, article 51B. Uh, for sure, I'm not going into the detail, but this is just to illustrate how this can be put into engineering terms. In this case, this is for assurance. Assurance is the way of putting into engineering terms what in GDPR appears as accountability and transparency. So assurance is the way of demonstrating that you comply with a given standard, a given law, because you have the evidences the documents, the artifacts, the processes that prove that you are complying with that, all together and aggregated using a set of argumentations that allow you to reason that this and that or that, and I don't have the analysis from the DPO, but that's because I don't need a DPO, and so on and so on. I'm putting that, that into engineering terms. And uh, if uh, we go on, I give the floor to Gabriel so that he can proceed with other tools. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about uh, a tool, which is part of the PDP4E toolbox. Uh, uh, this uh, this is uh, can be considered as a background tool. That means that uh, we have developed this in our institute. The name is Papyrus, and uh, this tool helps us to cover, for instance, the requirements and design part. So in the end, uh, as Samuel told us, this is the kind of things that are more uh, related to the engineer's mind. But I think that there are several engineers that have different views. So here we have this uh, Papyrus uh, interface, which is based upon uh, a model-driven engineering approach. So basically here, uh, we can represent the models that we want to use, for instance, to uh, represent requirements, to represent systems, to represent uh, almost everything that is related to the process we, we plan to support. So basically, what we have here is the final uh, goal of this project with regards to requirements and design. Because what we plan to do is to uh, introduce in this kind of interfaces the elements that are necessary to support the process uh, uh, for privacy by design. So uh, uh, here, uh, I think that the vision we have is this. Uh, there is a convergence between uh, the requirements process and the design process. The requirement process starts from GDPR. So there we have the law, we have the lawyers. They already uh, uh, specify some requirements that are mandatory. And then we have to translate those requirements to be understood by engineers. So the way we proceed based upon this model-driven engineering approach is to build a meta model. The meta model captures the fundamental concepts that we found in GDPR. And here we have the structure of those uh, fundamental notions. For instance, there you, you have the principles, which is something quite new. Uh, we have principles that can, are related, for instance, to transparency, to consent, etc. But we, we have also, uh, uh, let's say, more specific elements like data. And this uh, specific element is separated in personal data and data which are not personal. So by modeling all this, we have the opportunity to start uh, to, to structure how those concepts are relation uh, 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 and also to specify the attributes of those requirements. So as I mentioned, the objective here is to break down the GDPR uh, to a level in which uh, engineers can understand. 
But for this to be achieved, it's necessary to, to have this intersection between the legal and the engineering arena. So it's not an easy matter, and the PDP40 project is trying to realize that. So once we have this media model, it means that we already capture the fundamental concepts of the law, of the regulation. We have to have a method, and the method is to operationalize things. So here in the black boxes, we have the method. The method is just a sequence or uh, 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 yes, the phases we have to follow for, uh, for instance, to conduct this requirement engineering uh, process. Uh, we have talked this morning about the state of the art. And here we can see that what we are proposing is not completely new because there are some principles related to privacy, for instance, that were already there uh, by Hansen, for instance. There is a method to operationalize requirements, which is named PROPAN, and we rely on those kind of methods to inspire an extension of, 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 of our tool uh, for the operationalization of GDPR. So here, what we have are the inputs of this method. So there are things that are new, the yellow boxes. Uh, there are external inputs. And there are also changes between uh, the phases of, the, of that method. Again, uh, the final objective of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this method is to provide detailed requirements to be validated in a design. So um, basically, uh, the objective is to have a list of detailed requirements, propose a first design, and to elicit more detailed requirements to be validated in that system. So, how this design process is conducted? Well, we have some, uh, some ideas now. We are based on, on previous experience of uh, developing methods and tools. And what we can see here is how these uh, different, uh, uh, let's say, modules of the architecture can be used to conduct the design process. So basically we have, uh, for instance, databases that need to be represented and for that, it's necessary to create data diagrams. Uh, we also know that it's necessary to, to represent the flow, the process of data in, in a company, for instance. And for that, it's necessary to have this kind of process diagrams. And finally, we have to, uh, to, to, to have a consistency between those two diagrams and to map to a specific architecture. In this specific architecture, we are thinking about uh, the assets, the pets we have to deploy for the privacy requirements to be satisfied. And finally, uh, we have to consider that some of those uh, assets, some of those pieces of the architecture will be implemented as code. And as long as, those requir as, long as requirements are impacting those pieces of code, we need to validate the requirements. So for that, there is a module that we are developing in our institute, which is called Pramacy, that can be used for that. But it's necessary to extend all this. This is just the plan we have now, and we are trying to implement. So finally, uh, the method. The method is to consider standards like 27550 uh, and separate uh, this, the, the method in, in depending on the kind of diagrams we have, the kind of models we can have. Data-related diagrams, data-related data models we can have process-related models. We have to select the strategy to apply for the privacy requirements to be satisfied, apply the strategy, and validate the, re the results. So basically for the, for the uh, process models, we can apply these four strategies. For the data models, we can apply the other one, and that's it. So, so references for the record, and uh questions uh, in the, the Q&A and tomorrow and on Friday we will have a booth at uh, the APF so if you are staying you can also uh, join us uh, and also David is going to circulate some brochures uh, right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now a surprise we saw in the morning we will missing Rula so Rula is now with us and she will give her, uh, her lecture, her presentation. I will just look for her slides. Well, I will look first from just a little bit of work. Uh, 
Hello, everyone. <laughs> Let me, let me briefly introduce Rula. So Rula Sayaf 